So, I want a shop guitar. That is, a guitar that lives in the shop. My shop is a shed, and anything I put in the shed ends up rusting and getting cobwebs all over it, full of sawdust. So I don't want a nice guitar in the shed. I need a, a guitar that I don't care about. A guitar I can leave there, but access whenever I need it. I bought this. It's a $61 guitar, and it's brand new. The only problem is it was dropped, and it has a crack on the neck. The fretboard is actually lifting. So this is going to be a repair job. I'm going to take this $61 guitar I got off eBay, and I'm going to repair this neck. And this guitar is going to get a second life. Another life as my shed guitar. These were clamped down way too hard and when this neck fell not only did it crack near the scarf joint but it also cracked and stressed all these tuner holes so i opened up the cracks just with my hands as much as i could and i flooded it with the super glue after i clamped them so i just used these clamps and then i checked it on the opposite side there was definitely some squeeze up. So this is the crack from this side here that I had flooded. And after clamping, this is the squeeze out on the opposite side. So it was working. The flooding with CA glue works. This stuff, just with a capillary action, it just goes where it can, just like any liquid. So you can see this dark wood here on the maple. Those are the torn out fibers from the fretboard. What I did was I went in with a chisel and sort of leveled it out. So you have these little fiber ridges, or just little ridges. And if I were to put this back onto the main neck, it would fit like a puzzle. So what I do is I flatten it slightly so I don't have to worry about fitting it in mechanically perfectly with each little hump and lump in those fibers. And I do the same thing on the main neck. So this is leveled out slightly. So we're going to let the glue fill in the spaces where all of the wood has been removed. So I think once you start to assess the damage, and you can see where things are going kind of crazy and wonky, you can come up with a game plan and an order of operations. And what I've decided is to attack this in phases and layers. So the first thing I want to do is re-glue this piece back to the fretboard because the fretboard, when I first got this, was curving and lifting. So we want this fretboard to be level. And if it's dipping down, that means this first fret's gonna be high and we don't want that. So I wanna reestablish the bond with the fretboard and this piece here. And that's gonna be the first phase. I'm gonna get a bunch of glue with the syringe and really push it down in there and clamp this fretboard back to this piece. The next thing I want to do is reestablish the link with this piece and the scarf joint here, this main neck. There's a huge crack here. And I think once I reestablish these three pieces, then I'm okay and I can put the headstock in. I don't want this fretboard going that way. I don't want the headstock in here to push the fretboard going that way. I want to reestablish this link first to make sure this fretboard is level. That's the game plan. Everything else is just gravy. We're going to be using 
surgical tubing. This stuff is pretty amazing and it really distributes all the pressure where you need it evenly. And then we'll be using syringes with the really tiny applicator to really squeeze in the glue where we need it. Let's get to it. Now, this is just the first stage, right? Gluing this back on. The second stage is to actually route out where the crack is to sections to add splints and basically create sort of like a uh, inlay of maple splints on both sides of the crack. That way you have structurally sound pieces of wood replacing the cracked wood. So this glue up is just to get everything in place the second phase is actually going to add the structural strength that we require by adding known good wood in the places where we had that crack. So I finished the glue up, it was a success, and I've also routed the routes for the splints. The beautiful thing about these routes is that you can see your glue seam, where the actual cracks were, and how you put them together. And it's remarkable. I think a great YouTube video would be to one day have a cracked neck re-glued on, and then cut into cross sections. That way you can actually see how your glue up worked and how it fared. There was one crack here, and then you can see the, the glue up perfectly sealed. Another crack here, 
there's this crack here, the main crack there, and that extends this way. And you can see how that clamped up perfectly and nicely. And every crack just works out perfectly. This big main one here extends down here, and you can see how that fared. So I have some flame maple, and typically you want to use maple because maple is a very strong wood. I don't want to use maple. It's too hard, and I'm going to be carving this by hand. So once the splints are in, I'm going to be carving with a knife to get that profile back. And I really don't think it's going to be fun to use a knife on maple. I think you'd have to use rasps and files, and I don't really want to do that. So that leaves me with mahogany, and I had some blanks here, some just scrap wood of mahogany. And I'm going to go with mahogany because it's easy to carve with a knife, and it's soft. And it'll look good. I did it for a couple of test runs for the splints. Eh, they're a little bit too thin. But then I made these guys, and these are 0 0.05 millimeters smaller in every direction. And that worked out fine. So we're going to use these mahogany splints here. And so essentially I just, I make them on the CNC. And there's just a lot of sanding, really. Nothing fancy to 220. And I just scrape and scrape and scrape till I get a nice tight fit. So let's see how this fits. And then, of course, obviously, it's like... So we'll just brush on some glue, put the splints in, clamp it up with the tubing again, and then let it sit overnight. And then we'll start carving. So I unwrapped the splints and I started working on one of them just to get the process down. And the other one is sort of half complete. So they're quite high and I'm just able to use a chisel to kind of take out most of the meat and there's really nothing to it. The whole reason why we chose mahogany is because it's such an easy wood to work with. So once we get to a decent height where we no longer need to use the chisel, we can use just a whittling knife. And I just hit this on the strop a couple of times to sharpen it. So I can choke up on the knife and just use the tip, get right to that edge and start carving. The wood really likes to be carved in this direction. And I'm not going to worry about the profile yet. I'm just trying to get this down to height. And we're really just using the tip of the blade, just the tip to get that edge off and try to get the right height. Really nice. So I got close enough with the knife. So now I'm just gonna use some files. This is a really small fine file. And this one will chew out a little bit more. 
It's got a round edge on one, so it's good for this part. But I'll start to round over. I'm gonna remove some of those facets that the knife created. <laughs> 